So you see, it's just doing a time. So it's a time frequency analysis and showing you at which time, which frequencies are relevant. year at the CIRM, which is a great privilege and a great pleasure for me. And I was trying to, to open many different new branches of my corporations in the sense that I came back to what I consider my old love, which is function spaces, uh, which was the starting point of my scientific career many, many years ago. Uh, later on, I went into uh, wavelet theory a little bit, or theoretical background of wavelet theory, which uh, also here I came back by this event which just took place and which we will uh, discuss later on, the 30 years of wavelet conference. Uh, it was also, however, my first meeting in Marseille that I came uh, probably in 86 to Marseille and have been in Marseille a few times in between. So it's the first time that I'm staying so long. Uh, I brought my family with me and uh, found a very rich uh, scientific environment. And uh, also many people have been coming to Marseille to join the events that I have organized and uh, to have discussion with me. Uh, there was almost no period except Christmas when I didn't have visitors. Uh, and I think this was very good. Sometimes we were working in small groups or in, in the sense of uh, research in pairs or in small groups. Uh, in October we had first the PhD school um, which was emphasizing the computational side of uh, our uh, interests and uh, computational harmonic analysis was in the center and afterwards it was uh, the conference on function spaces in harmonic analysis uh, but in reality it was function spaces in harmonic and complex analysis. Um, uh, also due to my uh, cooperation partners here, Alexander Borichev uh, uh, and Hassan Yusfi, who are more on the complex side. And it was really nice to see how similar the methods and how different the terminology is in these two fields. So there was a lot of crossover and a lot of uh, new people that I had not uh, met before. So uh, probably for a long time uh, one of the conferences that I have organized without knowing uh, at least 60-70% uh, of the people. There were several new acquaintances that I made and I think this will have a long-term effect. Yeah, I mean uh, the goal was to get away from daily business and uh, uh, to uh, to reflect also more on, on what we are doing, kind of not, not just do the things that have to be done or do the things that one wants to finish or so, but uh, to, to look out and I would say an article that I finished here uh, um, on how functions are choosing function, it was the title, choosing function spaces in harmonic analysis changed during the writing and being here very much because I realized we're all producing very nice function spaces uh, but very rarely we discuss how we should use these spaces, why we choose one over the other and I was making uh, in this writing a comparison with consumer reports. In car industry everybody nowadays after a long period of producing cars knows uh, what uh, a good car should have. Producers advertise uh, their products, so they tell us how strong their cars are, how little consumption they have, whatever. Uh, but this does not immediately answer the question of the consumer who wants to say, I need a family car with these and these requests and another person wants to have a sports car. Uh, so 
uh, I tried to transfer these ideas into the uh, world of function spaces. Somebody has an equation, a uh, differential equation, maybe a pseudo-differential operator, and uh, asks another one which one of the systems that we have now should be used, what is useful. And I just gave the initiative of, of this, I think that will be a, a uh, hopefully a new branch of, of science to, to think at this next level. So kind of not just to produce the tools, but how to uh, uh, give advice of how to use it. And uh, of course, the explanation of what are the function spaces that I like to use is, has to do with my own experience. But others should say, no, uh, there are other criteria, but we make a long list of criteria and then uh, people can produce consumer reports and I think that will uh, contribute to the progress of science a lot because otherwise we have a thousand special tools and nobody knows how to use them. I would continue with uh, this broader view of, of, uh, uh, of science. So it's, it was not uh, um, a particular moment that I was working on a, on a single problem and uh, that I solved this problem now here. Uh, but uh, there were many, many moments where I thought now uh, we, we get a, a broader perspective. Um, and uh, so I think that it will be the long term impact of, of the situation. Um, if I look back on, on my earlier work so far, I always had periods of inhalation, so like a pump, you're pulling up and then after a while you are able to make pressure. So I think it's, um, I'm now at the level of, of not, not much immediate output, but a lot of things that have accumulated and which have to be sorted out, uh, where new connections have been established. And um, the environment is here quite good because uh, you can have a conference next door um, which is not in your field but still containing some interesting information. So a few times I was sneaking into the auditorium and, uh, and listening to some talks which I normally would not have attended. Uh, but because it was here and because I had a bit more time I was doing this. So I think uh, these were the, the nice moments. And the very fresh impression is uh, from the Wavelet workshop that we had uh, last weekend, uh, where especially for me personally, the talk of Jean-Luc Stark was impressive, where he was telling us after, I don't know, nine years of work on compressed sensing Wavelet methods, now there are really new algorithms that are allowing uh, the astronomers to squeeze out much more information from available data. So they have huge amounts of data. And um, if you can do significantly more out of this data by choosing appropriate algorithms, uh, then it's uh, valuable for the society, for everybody. And it's also valuable as a showcase for mathematics because uh, compared to the cost of acquiring this data, the cost of a research team in mathematics is really modest and uh, the uh, output and the significance is great. Yeah, this is uh, more or less, uh, uh, I, I can give the same answer. I was able to, uh, to cooperate with uh, different people uh, look around uh, in terms of instead of focusing I was defocusing and take a wider view wide angle perspectives and uh, I think that that's that's quite important also because uh, as a general uh, feeling uh, I think in science nowadays uh, things are getting uh, more and more specialized uh, people have to produce output and output can be only produced if you know already at the beginning of the project what the, what the results could be because you have not much time for failure. Uh, so sometimes I feel I'm now at the right age where the mixture of experience uh, with still ability to, to produce new, new results are, are in a good balance. Uh, but I think it's more my task and also the Molly chair was, was used in this way uh, to, to tie things together, to, to point out connections uh, to bring communities closer to each other. And uh, I think that's exactly what the research, no, not the research, a, rec a center, the uh, Recontre uh, 
Centre international des rencontres mathématiques et Schutztou. Yes, uh, I, I did not really feel uh, as an outsider uh, in the sense that I knew uh, quite a number of people that were my hosts, especially Bruno Torresani. We have been together in uh, two major European projects already and there has been continuous exchange of uh, personal and ideas over the last uh, 15 years or so. Uh, on the other hand, of course, I have never lived in, Fran in France. Uh, uh, I have brought my family and so uh, to be in, in a big city in France at the seaside is quite different from living in a relatively small town near Vienna where there is no seaside along. And uh, also of course uh, the uh, directions of research that, uh, that I found here are slightly different from the ones I have at home. At home I have the NUHAG, the Numerical Harmonic Analysis Group and so essentially I know most of the things that are going on at home and here there were several things uh, that I had to learn and to, uh, to meet people or so. Uh, but I didn't uh, feel that this was a difficulty or so, it was an enrichment. Um, at the end of course uh, time is always getting too short and one would like to have more intensive uh, cooperation, not just uh, organizing things together. Um, but I think this will be the long-term effect. We are just planning and considering further joint projects, so it will be not my last stay here, so I will come back, <laughs> so that's for sure. I think uh, my early contacts with, with Jean Mollet and also Alex Grossman were uh, maybe one of the things that helped me to, to uh, be chosen for this chair because the chair, which is a very nice institution, has not been uh, taken by people working in the direction of, of Molly. So it was a, a new chair. And uh, uh, if I look at the uh, profiles of my predecessors, uh, I'm the first who was really working in wavelets, who unfortunately never met him as a person, but uh, who knew quite well uh, his work and who was in contact with, with the community from the very beginning. So uh, it was first the idea of, uh, okay, it would be nice to meet him again and uh, some of the key players that I have been in contact with over many years, um, that the workshop is, was taking this dimension of uh, up to almost 50 participants on, on Friday afternoon and so, and uh, with 18 talks uh, was not completely foreseeable. Uh, CIRM was generous uh, to give extra support to this event and uh, so I think we have seen a historical event. I'm very happy that uh, all the talks were recorded, that they will be visible on the internet uh, because uh, 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 the, the uh, motto that we have chosen or that I have elected was impact and future, which means we should of course remember how everything began, uh, but we should also say what, what, what has changed through the, through the uh, development of wavelets and uh, what will be the future. So I would say, uh, for example, the, the talk of the presentation of Patrick Flandre from Lyon was talking about uh, the connection of communities in the wavelet business. So it was very nice uh, in the sense that he was showing uh, uh, starting with the bibliography on wavelets from 92. Uh, this was on Friday afternoon, uh, it's Monday now, and meanwhile I have contact again with the person who was doing the bibliography in Vienna, uh, Mr. Stefan Pittner. Um, he's still in science, also not doing wavelets, and I had no contact with him, also he's in Vienna for 20 years. <laughs> Now I met him, or I contacted him again through the internet and his bibliography is showing, if you look at the citations or so, that there were communities of uh, the people in mathematics, in theoretical physics, around Alex Grossman, Ingrid Obshi, and the, the computer science people. And these were relatively separated communities. They were doing things which turned out to be quite similar. Uh, and after a while it turned out uh, that they have to cooperate on, on this subject. And so just to look at the interconnections and the rel uh, mutual references of the different 
communities. He, um, Patrick Flandrin was showing how a network was growing and, uh, and it was getting more and more dense. And so aside from the scientific output, uh, uh, in wavelet theory it was showing that the interconnection and the work style has changed a lot. Of course also within mathematics there are more and more corporations going on uh, due to the internet and modern communication media, uh, but that mathematicians really work seriously with applied people uh, at a large scale uh, and that only together they are successful. And again I'm coming back to my comment about the success in uh, astronomy. Uh, Alain Arneado was talking about success in or expected success in the uh, area of biological um, or medical imaging. Uh, that's something that's I think quite important. I mean uh, we can develop very nice theorems uh, but if some of these theorems are the basis for real uh, understandable uh, success of that one can uh, write in a newspaper, that one can explain to students, that attracts smart young people into the field. I think that that's an, a very important aspect because um, uh, new methods need a lot of patience and, and, and uh, not just a, a large number of people, but really dedicated people who are willing to talk uh, with people from another community, uh, having different terminology, um, maybe uh, with some skeptical view on, on signal processing methods. But if they see that they get better results uh, uh, in cooperation with mathematicians, I think this is a very good output. I have looked a little bit into the statistics and uh, uh, the very naive things are how many books uh, with the word wavelet in the title, so ignoring those, this relative small number of, of French books with Ondelet in the title, sorry for that, uh, uh, then you find 120 books. So it's a, a significant uh, body of knowledge that one can find. There are uh, more than 500 PhD theses in the mathematical genealogy and I have observed some of them I have been missing and maybe added, uh, which carry uh, as a keyword the word wavelets in it. The number of papers I found in Central Blood uh, was 8,200 papers, which means if you uh, think of one paper per day, that's a period of 22 years. Uh, so practically on average every day in the last 25 years, roughly speaking, one paper on wavelets was written. And so this is cle it's clear that this has a significant impact. And it started all in Marseille and uh, uh, Serum was playing a role in this uh, um, activity. So I think that's a good idea. Of course, uh, this is a very easy question. Uh, um, I've heard from Céline Montpellier, who was uh, really a very nice uh, 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 guiding star for me in the sense of helping me to, to feel comfortable here and uh, to get around the difficult administrative steps that one might have. Uh, I've heard from her that uh, different colleagues have used uh, their stay here in a di completely different way. I think that's quite fair. You can uh, finish a book. Uh, uh, in my case, it was really after a long period of intensive project work at home and teaching uh, to again reach out for new, new, uh, um, for new contacts and for new uh, problems. And in this way, I was able to I have different visitors at different times and uh, that was a perfect place to do such, uh, such an exchange. So yes, it is, this, this is a re really good thing and uh, I'm glad to see that uh, according to what I've heard, the reputation of the, of the chair is uh, incre increasing more and more. That means it will attract also other people from different fields and uh, so I think it's a very good investment. Uh, that uh, the founders of this uh, chair are, are, are doing here. Yeah.